they may be entertained, they may laugh, they may giggle, but they're not getting aroused. They're not falling in love with you off of small talk, even if it's really good small talk. When we talk about man to woman and hooking, right? When there is this drama in the set, when there is a plot to the movie, that's when it becomes hooked. That's when it becomes fun and interesting and it can actually go somewhere. Right? If you're dealing with a group of girls, one of the most important things you can do to make the conversation actually go somewhere, to make it hook, because we were talking about hooking, right? Is to pick a target. <clears throat> as long as you're platonically talking to three girls, that conversation can only be moderately interesting. Okay? Um, give you another kind of a random movie metaphor today, but it's all right. Um, you guys seen some movies like, um, let's say like Pulp Fiction is a good example, right? You guys seen the movie Pulp Fiction? Older movie, dating myself here a little bit, right? So <clears throat> in that movie, what makes that movie great? Is the plot of that movie like the most brilliant plot ever in a movie? No. What makes that movie great is the fucking dialogue, right? It's the idea of you're in this like world of like the badass villains and you're hearing their day-to-day -day conversation about a fucking Royale with cheese, right? It's really, really interesting in that way. Um, but so you need both. You need both. But if it was just two random dudes who were not villains just talking about a Royale with cheese and that was the whole movie, that would also suck as a movie. Right? And so you need the plot to keep things going and then you need the fun filler stuff to make you care about the plot, to make it interesting so it's not just like forced upon you. Right? And so you can look at the plot as like the man to woman stuff and you look at all the conversation around it as all the, the fluff that makes it special, that makes it interesting, that makes it unique. And you want to have that. Um, when you're talking to a group of girls, if it just is small talk, small talk, small talk, even if it's really brilliant, clever small talk, even if it's like stand-up comedy level small talk, right? They may be entertained, they may laugh, they may giggle, but they're not getting aroused. They're not falling in love with you off of small talk, even if it's really good small talk. On the other hand, if you just go straight in and you're just man to woman, man to woman, man to woman all the time with no small talk, what's going to happen? The girl's friends immediately drag her away. Okay? Um, but you also cannot be man to woman with the whole group. You need to pick a target. Right? As soon as you pick a target, now the plot can develop. Now the movie can go somewhere. Right? And how do you pick a target? Well, you have to be nice to the friends. You have to keep the friends engaged. But you also need to make it most relevant with the girl. So my particular way of doing it is I put them in categories. If you, you three are the, are the group, you two are awesome. You two are like cool, solid, reliable. You're like my new buddies in the club. Like you are, you are the two coolest platonic people I've ever met in my entire fucking life. You are like invited to come to all my parties and be my friends and all that kind of shit, right? As friends, right? You, honestly, we're probably going to hate each other. There's a tiny, tiny chance we are going to be the most special people in the world to each other. And this could be like a fucking epic fucking like romance of the centuries. We could be fucking Romeo and Juliet. But let's be honest, most often that means we end up dead. <laughs> right? So that's, that's the deal. All right? So there's all this tension, all this possibility with one. But it's an unlikely event. You guys, you guys already won. Right? Or the metaphor I give a lot of times, let's say I'm like the CEO of McDonald's. You guys can be my fry chefs any day. You fucking, anytime you're down and out, you have a job waiting for you. Just come in, be like, I want to fry some fries. Put on the hat, you're good. You don't even have to interview. I love you guys. You, kind of be honest, there's a position on the board that you're probably not quite qualified for. <laughs> I mean, you can come in for the interview, but I, I, I'll be honest, it's a low percentage chance. But yeah, feel free to interview. It, it, I'd, I'd love to see you there. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. And by the way, you cannot have the fry job. <laughs> You're overqualified. <laughs> Sorry. No fry job for you. you it's, it's, fucking, it's fucking CEO board position or you're out on the street. Okay? That's the difference. Right? You guys have a guaranteed job, but it's kind of a, you know, it's a job. It's a nice job, but it's a low-level job. You have the fucking premium dream job? Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. Let's be honest. Right? But that's the tension. That's the tension, that's the possibility, right? Or it's like you guys, I'm give, I'll give you guys each $20. I'll give you a lottery ticket that could be worth $90 million. But it's probably worth nothing. Yeah. Which would you like? Do you want the lottery ticket or the $20? I don't know, I don't know. Purchase price of the lottery ticket was $20. <laughs> just, 
<laughs> just so you know. No. Okay, anyway. But that's the idea, right? So that you're creating this tension, you're creating that possibility. And that, that's, that's where this intrigue comes from, that's where that fun comes from. Um, and it's also very fun for the other girls in the group because they're used to their friend getting hit on, but they're used to their friend getting hit on by guys kissing her ass and being super nice to her. Them being told they're the cool ones, oh, you like them, this one's the outsider, that's actually very fun for them. It's very engaging for them, right? Uh, at a situation, just I was winging a set with uh, my students on boot camp last night, <clears throat> and the, the one girl was like, yeah, it was like very positive, and then the other girl that was the target was like, what is this, like a continuing row session? What the fuck? Like, what did I do wrong? <laughs> Why don't you like me, right? That's, that's kind of the vibe early on that can work very, very well for you. When we talk about man to woman and hooking, right? When there is this drama in the set, when there is a plot to the movie, that's when it becomes hooked. That's when it becomes fun and interesting and it can actually go somewhere, right? If it is just the boring guys hitting on my friends, girls want no part of that. If it is the small talk that's going nowhere, eventually girl, girls want no part of that because you're wasting their time, right? They would like to have great conversation at the bar and also, end up with a man at the end of it, or at least the possibility of a man or the, the excitement of a maybe man at some point in the night. If that's not on the table, it loses its luster. Right? Again, a plotless movie can only go on for so long. You can have good dialogue and good scenes for a while, but without a plot eventually, like, what the fuck is this? Where is this going? Rough map. <clears throat> you go in, she's probably in a group, right? You have two options. Engage the girl and then the group, or the group and then the girl. Either way, you need to engage both within the first 30 seconds. You also want to create some tension and drama. So you're very nice to the group, you're teasing the girl. Okay? That's the start. Tease the girl a few times, get her interested enough to care about your attention. Then you let her win a little bit. You give her a window to open up and talk to you, a window to qualify herself. Maybe you work with through the group. Hey, do you vouch for this girl? Is she cool? You know, would she would she be a good girlfriend or should I just run away? Get the friends to say, you know, whatever. So you get you get some level of commitments and buy-in from either her or the girl or the girlfriends. <clears throat> and then the next step, <clears throat> maybe that goes on for a while, next step is isolation. You want to get her away from her friends. And it doesn't have to be like away in a different place. You don't have to take her home. You just want enough space that you're not in line of sight with her friends. Okay? Um, for two reasons. Uh, reason number one, because I don't want to escalate in front of the friends. So you're talking about escalating to a makeout. I'm not going to escalate when the friends are looking. Right? Because there's just too much chance of the friends having a problem with that becoming protective, that kind of stuff. I just don't want to do that. So either when they're looking away or you've got distance or something like that. If even I'm in a situation where I could, should make out with the girl, but the friends are going to be a problem, um, I will maybe even tell the girl, like, I, I, would, I, I would totally would love to do this and this with you, but I'm not going to right now because I don't want your friend to be jealous. Right? I might even verbalize that fact because the set needs that escalation. That's my way of escalating without escalating. But yeah, so I'd, I'd move her away from the friends for the reason that I can't escalate and also the mo most important reason because I'm not worried about, I, I'm not keeping score by how many makeouts I get. I'm keeping score by how many girls I actually, you know, sleep with and develop relationships with. Um, <clears throat> so the most important reason why I'm moving the girl away from her friends is to see if she will. If, you're, if you say to the girl, we're going to go over to the bar 10 feet over there but slightly out of your line of sight and then we'll be right back and either the girl or the friend will not permit it to happen, there is a strong chance that's not a pullable set. Right? At least not like for that night. You can certainly take a number, follow up, have it go somewhere, but there's a strong possibility she's not going home with you if she won't go 10 feet away from her friend. Right? Now, things change. Right? Just because she won't go 10 feet away from her friend now doesn't mean she won't in a little bit. So I wouldn't give up right away. I'd stay in for a little bit, try again a few times, et cetera. But if, if when she clearly, clearly likes you and is very bought in, either she or the friend, and, and the friend clearly trusts you. If all that's in place and they still will not let any space happen, it's probably a follow-up and, and do it another day situation. It's probably not a same night situation. In a social circle situation, my, here's, my, here's my, there's tons of advice for social circle. Here's my one advice that, that trumps them all for social circle. Do not escalate, obviously, in public, okay? Your goal in a social circle situation is to get the girl one-on-one -on -one with you outside of the social circle situation, right? If she comes out as a, for a coffee with you as friends from the social circle situation, absolutely fine. You can make it man to woman from there. Okay. If you dance salsa together and she comes over to like dance salsa and she like is not thinking about this could lead to sex, she's thinking about I want to learn some new salsa moves, absolutely completely fine. And maybe you just end up sharing some salsa moves and that's where it goes. But maybe it goes to sex, right? But in front of all the other people there, they just saw this, this cool friendly guy 
inviting a friend for a coffee or doing some extra salsa with, with someone who wants to learn some steps, et cetera. So it's not gonna burn the social circle in any way, right? And the longer you have, the longer you're in that social circle and you don't escalate in the social circle and you are polite and cool and the more people like you, even if something happened that was a bad reputational event, it's gonna come back and people aren't gonna even believe it. They'll be like, you said that about him? No, I, I've known him for years, that's fucking shut up, no, right? Your reputation speaks for yourself. That's, that's what you'd like to have. So you're not polluting the circle, you can keep, you can keep picking from the same tree for years.